The second ga gateway that the enemy uses in order to bring us bondage uh, is what I call, is not what I call, but is what is called commonly soul ties or what, I, what we call sexual ties. Why is this important? And we'll base this on this scripture. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 2 that when God brought Eve to Adam, Adam said this. He said, now this is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And um, then he's going to say what, um, that when the two come together, they become one flesh. I'm going to get a little bit graphic here, but I want you to understand a little bit of what we're talking about when we're talking about having sex. And uh, You know, every covenant that God does or every, um, every time God makes a promise in the word, a covenant is like... Um, it's, it's like a testament, a covenant. God makes a promise or he, he, into, he comes into an agreement with somebody. Every time there's been a covenant in the Bible, it's always, there's always spilling of blood. That's why in the Old Testament, when, there, when Moses was on Sinai and he gave the people of God the Ten Commandments, after he did the Ten Commandments with them and they agreed, the Bible says they came into a covenant with God. When they came into a covenant with God, Moses took the lamb and he sliced the lamb and there was a shedding of blood. And the shedding of the blood of this lamb would represent that now there's a covenant between God and the people, a covenant based on the law. When Jesus came along later on and he comes and he's going to come and bring grace, well, Jesus will also go to the cross and he will, um, he will shed his blood. And in shedding his blood, there's also a covenant that takes place again there. Now, when, um, when, when a man and a woman sleep together for the first time, normally... A woman has what's called a hymen. And what happens is that when a man penetrates her that first time, in general, there is a shedding of blood. It's not a coincidence that God put this hymen in a woman so that the first time that a man would come into her, that there would be shedding of blood upon both of them. God put that there because ideally, when we come into sexual intercourse together, we are becoming one flesh and we're making a covenant with one another. I know that in this day and age, this doesn't, uh, this doesn't exist because people are having sex and people have turned sexuality into a complete circus. And I'm not going to get into all of that right now. But what I am explaining is that God designed sex as not only an instrument of pleasure, but he designed sex as an instrument to bring people into a covenant, one with another. In other words, God created sex as an instrument to tie people together. That's why in marriage, when we marry people, after marriage, the way that they consummate their marriage, in other words, what was spoken upon them to say, now the two are one, the way that that gets fulfilled is that later on, that man is going to come into his wife. And that's when the two in that moment are becoming one flesh. Now, this is under God's blessing. Unfortunately, every time that we're in living in fornication and we're having sex outside of marriage, well, the Bible calls this fornication. We're living, we're having sex and, it, and it's not under the covenant. But just because it's not under the covenant doesn't mean that we're not getting tied into certain relationships. Now we call this soul ties because, and I'm going to be very clear here, it is possible that someone that you had a relationship with and that you slept with them, that your bond to that person became beyond just a fling, but there's actually a soul tie that took place. How do we know that a soul tie took place between someone? Well, normally it's because in that relationship, from the moment that um, from the moment that that you were with that person, you changed. For example, um, how can I put this as an example? Okay, 
Sarah meets Rick. But Sarah has a type of a personality. But ever since she's been with Rick, she's changed. All her friends tell her, Sarah, man, man I can't believe how much you changed. Your personality has changed. I'm not talking about, you know, you dated a guy and then it was over and you dated another guy. I'm talking about now this. Sarah, when she met Rick, I mean, it changed her. And it changed her dramatically. It changed the way she talked. It changed the way she thinks. It changes the way she acts. It changes the way that she reacts. I mean, she's another person. What has happened there, there's a soul tie that was created. In other words, there's a part of Rick that has come into Sarah. And there's a part of Sarah that has come into Rick. Sarah is not the same anymore. There's a part of him that is inside of her. There was, that's called a soul tie. Now what happens is that when you become a Christian, and when we're talking about a part of Rick that comes into her and a part of her that goes into Rick, the reason why we say that this is deliverance is because oftentimes what we're also saying is that the demons that could be affecting Rick can also begin to affect Sarah. That's why a lot of times, you know, you see a good guy or a good girl and then they get with the wrong guy or they get with the wrong girl. I mean, somebody who's like in real, all kind of bad stuff. And then automatically, even though they're living a good life, as soon as they get in that relationship, everything goes sour and they they get corrupted. It's because there is a soul tie. Something has has taken place. I'll give you an example again from my life. Before I became a Christian, I, was, I had been with different girls. But there was one girl in particular. Man, with this girl, I ended up having a soul tie. I mean, there was, we fought together. I mean, I punched her, she punched me. I mean, it was a mess of a relationship. Now, one of the reasons why with her it became such a soul tie, I had got her pregnant. She ended up getting an abortion. Uh, we had got super close. We were always intimate. And then we were doing drugs together. I mean, it was just a mess. She ended up cheating on me with my friends. And then I ended up even going back to her. It was like no matter what I would do, we would end up crossing roads and keep coming back together. When I became a Christian, I, I said, how am I going to break free? Because this girl was still in my mind. And she wasn't just in my mind for a few months. Even a year after I was saved, I was still remembering that relationship. It was like a place that was stuck in my mind. I couldn't get free from her. I could still feel her in my life, although she wasn't in my life for more than a year. And probably she had moved on and wasn't even thinking about me. But I was unable to move on. She would come to me in my dreams. I was ending up even having sex with her in my dreams. I mean, it was a problem. Until I realized that, man... There was a door that was open and I had a soul tie with her. Then I realized that this relationship had definitely brought demons in my life because there's a certain way that I was before I met her that I had never been able to find back that Frank of before that relationship. It was like there was Frank before her and Frank after her. And I says, man, something has dramatically changed. And so I realized that, man, there's definite soul ties with this person. So what I did is, when I learned about soul ties and I learned how demons can come in, I went into prayer about this. And what I'm talking to you about is not just my personal experience. I've actually done deliverance for married couples who are Christian, where either the guy or the girl still had soul ties with somebody from before they got married, and they're married in Christ. And yet soul ties were still there. Thoughts were still running around in their minds. So, I mean, this is something that definitely needs to be taken care of. Oftentimes, people that end up having strong soul ties, it's either, it could be with somebody who you lost your virginity with, that you really got close with. Sometimes it comes even through an abusive relationship. I mean, it's just dominant. So how do you get rid of soul ties? Let's say I'm speaking to you right now and, you know, Holy Spirit is like just ringing this person, this guy or this girl in your spirit. And you're like, oh my God, man, I think I got this soul tie. I mean, th this is ringing a bell. I'm not the same ever since that relationship.
to move on. My friends tell me that I can't move on. I mean, sometimes you're not even able to meet somebody because in the spirit, and I'm really putting this in quotes, you're already with somebody. I mean, you're already taken even though you're single because it's it's like in the, in the spirit realm, you're already given to somebody. You got to break this or else it becomes a problem to, to and, and, and you got to be able to break that cycle in order to be free to roam in terms of your relationships. So, how do you get rid of soul ties? Well, first of all, you got to be able to identify this person. Now, let's say you did identify this person. How would you go about praying so that you're free from this? Well, very simple. Let's use the example of Sarah and Rick. Let's say Sarah would be a believer that I would have right here. And Sarah would be telling me, you know, I've been a Christian for X amount of time. And this guy that I was with while I was in the world, man, it was such a messed up relationship. That guy was really abusive or, you know, he was very controlling. But no matter what my friends told me, I could never leave him. It's like I was bound to him. And these are all things that I've heard so many times. I would say to Sarah, I said, okay, but now have you seen him? No, no, he's out of my life. It's just, buddy, I, I, it's just like he's still there. Okay. You need deliverance, Sarah. This is what we're going to do. And I would lead her in this prayer. I would say, okay, Sarah, let's pray. You're ready to break your tie with Rick. She's like, yeah, I'm ready to break my tie with Rick. Okay. And then I would lead her in this prayer. I would say, okay, I renounce. She would say, I renounce. To every soul tie that I have with Rick. God, I ask you for forgiveness for coming into a covenant with him. Right now, I break that covenant and I break that soul tie in Jesus' name. Then I would tell her, I says, okay, I break and I renounce every spirit of, that is connected to Rick that has come into me. Every seed that Rick sowed into my soul that came through that relationship I renounce those seeds right now. Now, depending on the seeds, we can enumerate them. I renounce the seed of intimidation. I renounce that seed of, of insecurity. I renounce the seed of control because those are things that Rick would have done to her. Obviously, for her to come to a place where Sarah would understand this, I mean, she would at least have to have an opening to say, okay, this is what has come out of my relationship. Now, as soon as she renounces those seeds... Then she could say, every part of Rick that is in me, I renounce it and I reject it in the name of Jesus. Then she could pray and she could say, every part of me that is still in Rick right now, I claim it back. Let it be washed in the blood. I claim it back. What's basically happening in this prayer? Well, you're recognizing that since that relationship, there's a part of you that left you. And now you're praying to take that part back. And I promise you that such a prayer will definitely bring deliverance. You know, my, my, my wife that I'm with now, 17 years married, we, she started liking me in about the month of, let's say, January of the year that we actually started dating but she only was able to open herself to me during the month of April and May. And uh, one of the things that I noticed is that at one point she went and speak with a pastor and she still had a shoebox where she had pictures and notes from her ex-boyfriend that she didn't even care about anymore, but she kept those objects. The fact that she had kept those objects, I guess it kept some type of a soul tie on her. Because one thing's for sure, as soon as she started letting those things go, her heart started to open up to the possibility of being with somebody else. And she's had her soul ties, and if she was here, she would be able to testify about how God set her free and allowed for us to be together. Because both of us, whether it was on my end or on her end, we were both in relationships before we came to Christ. And both of us in the relationships that we were in ended up being heavily affected by them to the point even that there was demonic oppression. Personally, when I broke the soul ties with that girl that I was referring to, there's a lot of sexual spirits that left me. A lot of sexual spirits. Because those were the type of spirits that moved a lot in that relationship. 
So things began to change. I hope this is making something clear for you. So that's how we deal with the door of soul ties.